hello, hello. I've been out just for the uh, just for the evening, out in the hooped bivvy bag, just to get out for the night, really. Um, I'm keeping my voice down because there's a few dog walkers pacing around. Not that I'm doing anything wrong. I just don't want to. Uh, I don't like getting hassled. So I'm getting a quick coffee on, and uh, I'm heading out to test out the Ellie Glide M1 Plus, which is my new e-bike. So yeah, I'm keen to get it out in the woods. I've had it out on the road and I've been testing it out recently over like varied terrain. When I say varied terrain, I mean to and from the gym, the main commuter sort of effort that I use it for. But I wanted to see really what she's like for getting her out, getting out with the backpack on and jumping out on camp outs as well as testing the off-road capabilities because after all it is a mountain bike. I'm pretty excited to uh, give it a blast through the woods because even when you're zipping through traffic she's got a bit of speed to her and uh, <laughs> hopefully I don't hit any trees but yeah brings a new stealth element to uh, the camping aspect doesn't it? down range and then I'm gonna pack up my bed set up get the bed roll away chuck it in the pack So far, I'm really impressed. The braking seems to be there, the suspension's there. I'm not getting jittery hands after a while of riding and stuff like that. It seems to grip quite nicely in the corners. Something that I did worry about with it being an e-bike was that it was gonna slip out on terrain as you're going uphill and stuff. But as you can see here, it doesn't do that. It still keeps that power going and it's like it's got a sort of ABS feature or like a traction control where as you're going up the hill, it's not slipping out at the back end, but it's giving you that traction, pushing you forward. Now, the standard tires on it seem to be doing pretty well in the sand, which sand usually is a pretty hard place to ride a bike. For any of those motorbike riders down there or the downhill riders and stuff like that, you'll know that sand is a bit of a sketchy one, but so far, so good. Obviously, that's independent to riding styles and stuff like that, but she seems to be eating it. I've had her off the ground a few times and I expected because of the battery weight and stuff like that that she'd hit the ground pretty heavy, but she seems to be floating pretty well at the minute. 
So I'm gonna keep pushing her, see if I can find any dramas that are kind of annoying me. But so far, so good. I'm really enjoying it. And you know what? She's a good looking bike as well. A lot of e-bikes, you'll look at them and you're like, nah, that ain't no good. But what I like as well is it's pretty stealth. You take this to the gym and I lock it up outside and there's not a massive tell that it's an e-bike. Yeah, fair enough, there's a big lithium battery strapped to it. But if you're worried about that, take it off with the key and take it inside with you. As you can see, that's locked on anyway, and it comes with two keys. As you can see, it's a pretty standard 27.5 inch wheel mountain bike. But obviously they've chucked the battery on there and these are all fed internally on the inside of the frame to deliver power to this rear wheel. You've got your control panel here which is giving you options from 1 to 5 and that's basically the power delivery that you want. You can choose basically how much electronic interference is added, whether you want it on an easy mode which is going to make it more economical or mode 5 that can let you tear up stuff like this without any dramas. Now the max range for this bike is 100 kilometers and that is achieved with a 75 kilogram rider on. Well I'm 73 kilo so I suppose if I was to take it a bit easier then we'd be in a good place but I am lanky so it'd probably mean I've got a little bit more wind resistance. Now that's the load staying consistent at 15 kilometers an hour and that's on a 26 degree day. Now it's a little bit colder than that and we know that lithium doesn't work for as long in colder conditions, but it's still about 20 degrees today. So I don't think that's gonna give us much inf interference. I don't think at all that we're gonna be achieving a 100 kilometer range because of the fact that this bike is getting <laughs> blasted around off-road and I'm putting it through its paces. If I was cruising, and uh, bouncing around at a pretty bookshy speed on flat roads, like it says in the description, then I think you might be able to achieve that. Come on, let's crack on, beat this rain back into the woods and see what else we can put her through. So, as you saw then and right now, I'm just using one of the mods that you can get with the bike, which is an accelerator, like a scooter. I've got this on wide open now and I'm traveling at 20.5 kilometers an hour. <laughs> Uphill, on gravel, one-handed, probably not sensible, but it really does work oh, quite well. And all it is, is this just a little accelerator on the inside of the grip here. And she goes <laughs> so that does make it like a little sort of rev and go scooter which is brilliant because if you don't want to pedal you don't have to obviously that kills the battery a lot more but get it on wide open you're going to be good for at least 20k i reckon don't quote me on that but i reckon i think it's viable so far so good i felt like i needed a little bit more on the front end braking wise when i was coming down the hill uh, earlier on and i was probably hitting uh, quite a decent speed um, I feel like I didn't have quite enough uh, stopping power on the front end. That was just me trying to use the front brake singular. As soon as you pair them up together, um, brake in sort of uh, 70, 30 in favour of the rear wheel, then you're good to go and you pretty much stop on a dime. So I can't really complain with that. Uh, would more stopping power on the front end be a little bit better? Yes. Can you get round it? Yes. Is it brilliant for the price and the range that it's in? I'd say so. Let's keep going. So I've swapped over to the GoPro. I just want to get a hands-free feel and take you guys along Whoa, for some fast sections. Through here, oh, they were spiky. Whoa, of how the bike's looking at speed in real time. And so far, oh, she's fun. Whoa, send it up there, cool. <laughs> handles it, mate, handles it bit of off-road sections and it's great because you've got that accelerator which can actually get you out of dodge pretty quickly if needs be and we're on to a bit of a downhill section now we're good we're good we're fighting through we're on the trail still what bouncy Woo and through there okay whoa cool oh, yeah well done <laughs> Nice. Oh, good jump there. Through here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is nice. Very flowy. Very flowy. And braking. Yeah. Woohoo. Whoa. Yeah, baby. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Very nice. Very nice. 
Whoa. Oh my God. The GoPro's doing its own thing. It's moved and shifted from where I originally put it. So I hope you got all that, but that was good. You know what? That did very well down through there. I was really pleased with it. So the actual ground itself was this. You've got like layers of sand, bit of mud in there with it. And this is the tire track down through here. So it was very grippy on it. And I didn't have any dramas with grip. As you can see on the tires, there's a little bit stuck here, but mainly the tires are all clear of it. They haven't chopped up. They haven't turned into slicks and that handled that very well. So I think what we can do now, we've just come down there. We can head straight back up there on the flat surface and then back round for another go. You know what's great about that? I haven't got to put any of the effort in. <laughs> Let's set off again up through here. This is a nice incline, just cruising up it. Now I'm on level five at the moment. So I'm cheating. I'm literally doing no work. The bike is just, I've just stopped pedaling because there's no need for me to. At the minute, I'm just cruising up here with the accelerator on. Ooh, sandy bits, sandy bits, and she's fine, she's through it. Up this bit of a hill bit there, a bit more elevation. And you can hear the motor working. So I'm gonna give her a bit of assistance getting her up this hill, but I'm really not giving it much at all. And she's just cruising up here. I'm not out of breath, hear me, I can close my mouth, <laughs> stop the flies getting in, straight up through here, this is good fun man, I'm enjoying this, oh, she don't need, whoa, 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 sandy bit there, I lost the front end, um, you don't mind losing the back end, it's when you start losing the front end, you start, start worrying, this is nice down through here, we could probably come back down, oh, this way, that'd be nice and flowy, and already, that section that we did back there that we did downhill we're back at the top am i out of breath no <laughs> i'm gonna do one more i'm gonna do one more down this section because i quite enjoyed it it's quite nice and flowy and fast and i'm just gonna pin the electrics i'm just gonna chuck it with the accelerator on get it wide open and see how we do i think by the looks of it the GoPro was keeping up with me last time. So, let's try and do that again. Whoa, through there. Feels weird not having knee pads on riding like this. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, nice. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, go on, baby. Mm -hmm. Don't look down at the screen, Jet. Oh my God, I nearly went in the bush. Jesus. Whoa. Break, same part again. Nice, stuff with that, yes. Whoa, watch out for that. <laughs> I've lost the GoPro. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> grinding her now up this steep section just to make sure she's actually got the power and the ability not to just dud out on me I want to put it through his paces make sure you know he's strong enough to get a real thrashing without uh without destroying it you know because I want it to be legit I want it to be real because I don't want to suggest something to you guys and me thrashing it around and uh broken at the end but I think so far so good oh I went too hard on the gears then I'm content that it's uh, great on the road and to be honest so far it seems to be ooh, holding up well on here as well let's try it down here I don't fall off cool okay all right let's have a look down there quite a steep one Oh, no, we don't need power down here. This is very steep. Okay, nice. <laughs> ah. See, now 
be worrying about this on a normal bike. Oh, this isn't going to be fun to come back up, is it? But I'm not asked. you know why? Because I haven't got to do the work. <laughs> there we go. Speed! Oh, mud, mud, mud. I probably should have worn glasses. Now, I was, believe it or not, um, trained up and I did my mountain biking instructors in the army. So, um, long story short, I've got no idea what I'm on about. <laughs> Probably thinking, why did they need a, a mountain bike instructor in the British Army? Well, the reason being is because we get to do something called adventurous training. And uh, that gives uh, the army the ability to put soldiers where they can test their fears and stuff like that and try them with new things that they've never tried before in a controlled environment and now I used to know the uh, the legit definition of why we do adventure training but I, I no longer know so if anyone knows chuck it in the comments below and we're back onto tarmac I'm on complete opposite side now you can hear that there's a bit of a squeaky brake there I don't know if that's the front or the rear. It might just be them overheating because I've been powering down mad stuff. Yeah, it'll be that. I just touched them and they're extremely hot. I might be a little bit out of this bike's comfort range because it is indeed a downhill park. I'm on a downhill park now. I don't think this is a good idea. Now my ability is okay. I used to ride downhill, um, race and that. But I don't think that this bike is up to that. It's not what it's built for at all. Um, it's a mountain trail bike. Um, and this is gnarly stuff. So I'm going to have a look up there, scout, see if there's anything doable, um, but I don't want to risk it. Obviously the extra weight as well, if it being an e-bike, I, uh, yeah, I don't want to put too much pressure on it. Um, the brakes are hot and, you know, downhill bikes are built with disc brakes and stuff like that. They're double the size of this um, and probably double the pistons in the calipers to get you stopping. So I might have to do an about turn here and uh, head back to the van but I'm interested to show you guys how I actually utilize this e-bike with van life and chuck it in the van and uh, give me that ability to stay in one place and cut around town, go and get my shopping and stuff like that. So let's head back and um, show you that. There is routes that are a bit more chilled out of here, but a lot of it is like this. Hello. You okay? There we go. Home sweet home. There Bo is. Back to the luxury now. <laughs> Back to the luxury. Bilbo Baggins. My van. I'm not even going to walk the bike in to here. Oh. And there we go. Let's get her away and have a look at the after action review. Glide M1 Plus. I'd say my favourite points about it are the fact that it can climb hills like they're nothing. It just jumps into gear straight up and you chuck it in gear 5 and it'll cruise up anything. 
without minimal effort on your legs or anything like that. So it's great. It's what an e-bike should be. The frame and the design of the bike, absolutely beautiful. The gears are pretty flawless changing. They're Shimano, so you know they're good there. The suspension, I thought would be its weak point, having the extra weight of the battery and stuff like that, but actually it performed really well. And although I was jumping some pretty intermediate stuff, I didn't bottom the suspension out once. So that was great. The only thing that I would say uh, that wasn't quite up to my uh, up to scratch, up to my liking, was the um, the brakes. Now I think that that's fair enough in a bike that's in this price range. If you wanted everything on a bike like this, a great electric system with a reasonable range on it, the great brakes, the great gear shifting, as well as all the perfect ergonomics, you're going to be into a lot more money than what you're going to be paying for for this. So I really think that for the money, you're not going to do much better than this. I think it's a great bike and it performed and did everything as I wanted it to that I threw at it today. And you know what? I didn't hold back, I sent it. Um, so I really can't complain with the bike. What I'm gonna do now is strip it down and in order to get it in the back of my van underneath my bed, the way that I built it is I need to take the pedals off and the front wheel. So they are actually bolts on the front wheel, which this isn't gonna be a drama for many people. It's just the fact that I'm taking the front wheel off to get it in my van. All I will say is that if you are going on rides, you will need to take tools with you, i.e. a spanner or a ratchet. But there is the bonus side that if you are using this as a commuter bike to and from work and you're locking it up outside or to the gym and stuff like that, you're not worried about quick release wheels going missing, which would be an expensive drama if the real one went missing because of the electrics involved. I must say I love the built-in headlight that you get on this, pointed down the road and you're good to go at night. Like I mentioned earlier, you've got your key to be able to take your battery off and now you can take that inside and charge it. is now on and charging in the van and my compressor for the fridge is currently on as well which usually uses about six amps so that is drawing about three amps to charge so the charging time for the battery is about seven hours but that's from dead and that's used about two bars so i reckon a couple of hours and it'll be good to go all that means is i've just got to sit the van in the sunlight for a while and we're good to go and it'll be charging off the solar so yeah man, I'm happy with that, um, it's worked out pretty well, I'm loving the bike, I'm looking forward to getting out on some more adventures with it, and I hope you've enjoyed this little trial of this bike as well. I must say thank you to Ellie Glide for sending me this bike to review it, um, it's been great, I've had a blast out on it, and yeah, I've given my honest opinion on it, like I said I would to them. There's some bits I would change, there's a lot of things that I like about it, and yeah, I think it's a good bike, anyone that wants to commute on something like that, I see people blasting around on those all the time as well, uh, as delivery drivers. So, yeah man, 100%, cool bike, love it, and uh, look forward to some extra adventures on it. So, thank you for watching, it has been an absolute pleasure. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and let me know if you want to see some more overnighters and all that good fish. Peace out, and I'll see you next week.